so you, you've heard of, of two of the three kingdom flips, right? Just to review. So it, normally schools would have an admissions profile, right? That would uh, uh, give an advantage to people that uh, are from healthy homes, that have an ability to pay, right? And that, and it, and at our school, we take that admissions profile and turn it upside down. Right? That the more at risk a student is, the higher the priority they get. <laughs> right? So if you're uh, from a, a member of one of the, the uh, uh, a person of color, if you're from a single parent home, if you're uh, uh, you know, struggling ac academically, that puts you higher on on our list, not lower. So, so access is flipped. We we said uh, typically in, in funding such a school, right, that 90% of the costs are paid by tuitions, and you raise 10%, and that we just talked about flipping that on its head. Okay. So the third one has to do with the kind of staff that are going to make a, a, a school like Hope uh, succeed. And, and it it's, needs to be a, a kind of missional, all-in sort of, of staff community. And, and the reason for that is this. Very simply, there is no redemption without sacrifice, right? Right? Jesus teaches us that, that there is no such thing as redemption without sacrifice. So we are aiming at being a redemptive school. Right? And, and so we're going to have to follow Jesus in, in the laying down of our lives for our, our urban neighbors. And, and so that's only possible, I, I would believe, say, to the extent that, that every person has a sense that, that they've been called by God. And so in, in our interviewing for staff, we're trying to discern, is this a person that, that senses God's call to, to a, a missional vocation, right? And, and, and here's one reason why that's so important. Because this is going to be the hardest job that you will ever do. And, and so, uh, almost, you know, invariably, within about two weeks, I've got a new teacher in my office crying because this is just so hard, right? Now, what, what basis do I have to be able to say to that teacher, you're, you're going you're gonna to be all right and God's going to help you? Well, it's because everyone who's been called right, will be equipped by God. So if he's called you to this, then you can, be, you can guarantee that he's going to equip you to carry out what he's called you to do. And so understanding God's, God's call is, is so essential. We say, if it's the Lord's will, it's the Lord's bill, right? <laughs> the, the Lord is on the, on the hook to provide for that. What we're looking for are what, what we call no excuses kinds of, of teachers. Right? One of the questions we'll ask in an interview is, what do you think, what do you think it means to be a, a no excuses teacher? And, and the, the teacher who, who, who says, well, that, that means that, that, that those students and those families have, you know, there's no excuses for them not to do what, what they need to do. That's not our person. The person who says that no matter what, there's no excuse for me <laughs> to, to fail, right? That, I, that uh, I'm going to do whatever it takes. That's, that's your person, right? That's, that's a, an, an all, an, kind of an all-in, do-whatever-it-takes mentality. Another thing is, is that we're thinking of, of all of our teachers as pastors of the students and families in their, in their room. That's a really unusual 
thing, right? <laughs> is that, is that, so if you're thinking of, uh, as a teacher that, that you're just going to go in and, and teach a lesson and then go home, <laughs> that, that is not going to work. Right? It, this is a person who, who actually comes and is excited about the opportunity to shepherd the hearts of the students in their, in their classrooms. They, they see themselves as pastors of the, of the students in their, in their, their classes. Um, and another part of that is, is that we know that, that programs don't change people, do they? People change people. And, and so you're the instrument. <laughs> as as, as uh, Paul Tripp puts it in one of his books, uh, instruments in the Redeemer's hands, people in need of change helping people in need of change. That's, <laughs> that's magic. If, if you see yourself as, as an instrument in the Redeemer's hands. And uh, uh, so, you know, what, what kinds of ways is that, that above and beyond uh, investing in the building of relationships? We, we, another thing we say is that, is that we know that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Well, well how does that kind of caring work? Well, it, in the end, it's, it's a sacrificial kind of, of love that's necessary to build, build those kinds of relationships. I mean, let me give you some examples. The, the, uh, the other day, uh, after school, I, I had to get something uh, from one of the classrooms, and I, I uh, took the elevator upstairs, and as I walked out of the elevator, here was my middle school uh, science teacher with a bandana on and a, a Nerf uh, gun going like, like this in the hallway, and and there were his his mentor group of, of boys were all <laughs> having a Nerf war on <laughs> after school in the thing. And and how do you think I felt about that? I was ecstatic. I was overjoyed. Right here's a person who's outside of school hours, who's investing in building relationships with these boys. Do you think that experience translates into, into the classroom? Oh man, does it ever. Does it ever. But that's, that's the kind of over and above kind of, of all in kind of thing it, it, it takes. So almost all of our teachers in the upper school are leaders of a mentor group. They've got a small group of of, of uh, men and, and women that, that they're building and pouring into. And most of that building into and pouring into happens outside of, of school time, right? And, and people, because they've got a missional mentality, right? They love that. They're looking forward to that. They're trying, they're scheming and dreaming about ways to build those kinds of, of relationships with, with our, our students. And, and some of it goes to extraordinary levels. Uh, we, you know, we've had situations where, where a home situation was so toxic and so broken that we've had some of our own teachers step up and say, uh, and invite that student to come and live in their home with them for, for a year or two. You understand what I'm getting at when I'm saying all, all in? Right now, if, if you've got a, a, a ministry, missional kind of mentality, what, that, that's so exciting, right? That's, that's, that's the kind of thing, thing that uh, uh, thrills you. you and some of our, of our teachers have moved into the city. Uh, because they're, they're, they're so committed to connecting with our, uh, with our families. Another issue that, that is a part of that, that all in is, is related to the longevity of staff. And by God's grace, uh, we've seen staff who are, are committed to being with us for the long term. Now, why is that so important? Right? Most of our families, there, there's so much turmoil right, going on in their lives where everything is changing all the, all the time. That, that uh, when, you, when you're, here's, here's an example of one thing that'll happen is in the mornings when the students come in, some of the students go on what I call a, 
a, a parade. They, they walk around and they, they see, they visit with some of their former teachers and they get some love. They get, they get, get a hug here and some love there. And, and it's as if, ah, oh, everything's all right because I, I, I saw Miss, Mrs. Wald and I saw, I saw Mr. Crawl. And, and, and so do you see how, how, when everything else is in flux, right, to have a staff that are there for the long term, wow. I mean, that's that, that's a, a, a really an amazing, important thing. But as you can see, all of this re requires some level of, of sacrifice, sacrifice, and and it is so hard, and and it it causes you to lean on and depend on one another in ways that you never thought you would ever do it. You're, you're not going to you know check in, do your work, and then go home. Right? You're, you're, you're working with your best friends <laughs> and you're crying, right? So on, on, uh, on Fridays, a, a number of the, the women teachers uh, come over to my house in the morning for, for breakfast and Bible study. Uh, uh, my wife is a third grade teacher at, at Hope. And, and on Friday nights when I come home from, from work, there's the remaining of, of this morning breakfast, right? There's there's coffee and muffins, and and I look and there's always a, a box or two of Kleenexes out. I go, oh, this was a good, this was a good morning, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it, it's going to cost you everything you've got if, if you're going to get involved in this, and and you will be more satisfied more fulfilled <laughs> about, uh, than, than anything you can, you can uh, imagine. It, it will require a radical dependence on God and on His Word, uh, an, an all-in kind of a commitment, but uh, oh my, the fruit and the results of that are, are really, really amazing. So there's three kind of kingdom flips that, that, are, uh, that we found to be essential in in a school like, uh, like Hope Academy.